Welcome to another episode of Modern Box. So yeah, um, obviously preparing for the World Cup, thought let's do a little bit of a stats exercise, a little bit of a look through the histories, look through the history books of previous World Cups. So yeah, I thought I'd compare the world rankings, um, the year, beginning of the year of the World Cup, um, how they stack up, how that actually affects the semi-finalists of a World Cup that year. Uh, unfortunately, there is only stats for the from 2003 onwards, so the 2003 stats are a little skewed because of the fact that they were only really started after the World Cup. But yeah, I thought it'd still be a fun exercise to go through and see kind of where we stand, where the world, where the what would happen, what are the odds if you are in the top four, how does that play out? But yeah, let's go through kind of like how things turned out, how this um, each year. So in 2003, as I said, started after the World Cup, meaning obviously. England was world ranked because 2003 they won the World Cup with New Zealand, um, Ireland and Australia taking up the next uh, few spots. So the semi-finals of that World Cup effectively were as um, New Zealand, Australia and then France, England was the other semi-final with obviously England taking it against <coughs> New Zealand. I meant Australia, sorry, Australia. So yeah, that obviously shows there was about a 75% chance there of, to, of getting to semi-finals, but it is very skewed as that's kind of when they started. So the best performing teams would obviously take the world rankings. The next, in 2007, we have New Zealand, France, Australia, South Africa, making up the top four spots, obviously in that order, respectively. Uh, but the, the, the semi-finals are England, France, and South Africa, Argentina, meaning only two of the four sides actually made it. So 50-50, I mean, that shows a lot of space. Obviously, I'd say... In every World Cup, the top eight, top nine, give or take, uh, made it to the semifinals, which does bode unfortunately in showing that gap between the Monos and the World Tops. Uh, unfortunately, Rugby World Cups showcase that that gap that needs to be covered and has been improving, honestly, I have to admit. If you look at a lot of teams, a lot of the rankings, the, the teams are getting closer, but definitely is uh, quite interesting to see. Um, what is interesting with this, with this year, uh, France and obviously... South Africa being the last rank there, uh, actually taking it over Oz, although Oz was lower, that's probably quite an odd one as South Africa was the lowest rank of the four and still went over the final. That's, that's the only year that's happened, so quite interesting and does showcase that it doesn't really matter which part of the top four you're in, it's as long as you, as long as you get to the semi-final, I guess, any, every game counts. Uh, the next two, the next year World Cup is New Zealand, Australia, and then South Africa, England. Um, the semi-finals there were Wales, France, and Australia, South Africa. So that obviously then France playing against New Zealand in the final, New Zealand taking it. What is interesting there is the the actual. They're also a fifty percent chance, showcasing that it's it's not really give or take as long as you're in the top eight. Um, again, what uh, and then obviously in twenty fifteen we have New Zealand, South Africa, Ireland, and England in the top four with. Um, and all Southern Hemisphere semi-finals, which is quite odd. So, uh, SA, New Zealand, Oz and Argentina making up the actual semi-finals, with Australia and New Zealand being the final, New Zealand taking it. Very interesting how that uh, plays out. It is odd that all New Southern Hemisphere teams won that World Cup, because there's always been an argument that the, the competition between Southern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere and Northern Hemisphere teams in World Cups and in general rugby, as some people have the feeling that Northern Hemisphere is stronger, some people have the feeling that uh, Southern Hemisphere is stronger. Obviously, what is interesting is there's only time that the, the, the for most of the World Cup tracking history, New Zealand or South Africa have been on the top, New Zealand obviously majority of that, with England only really leading the spot in 2003 and most of 2004. So it does that does tend people to believe that these, uh, Southern Hemisphere teams are stronger. But if you look at it, fifty percent of the almost every semi final except for twenty fifteen, um, at well in the ones we just right now, New Zealand, uh, it's 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 fifty fifty split between them. So I don't think I think that actually it's a lot closer than we we we, we sometimes think. The the competition is exceptionally tight when it comes to game to game. Um, the location of the World Cups definitely does seem to play a different play a role on which teams go forward to that final. Um, normally, when it's hosted in Northern Hemisphere, te in Northern Hemisphere, there's a good showing in the Northern Hemisphere. Whereas in 2015, um, there was actually a poor showing in the Northern Hemisphere, as a, it's quite strong 
um, Southern Hemisphere performance. Interesting. But yeah, let's get to the stats a little. So 56% chance of making it to the top four if you are into the semifinals, if you're a top four team, meaning that it's pretty average. Although, what is interesting, if you take the World Cup rankings just before a World Cup, um, it goes up a little to 62% as Australia in, it sneaks into the top four just before the World Cup in 2015, skewing the figures a little. But what is more interesting is 75% of winning the world chance of winning the World Cup if you were the world ranked number one when the World Cup happened. So obviously those are, we don't have a huge data set here. So it is, it's so, so, it's, it's not perfect to distinct, but it is interesting stats nonetheless. Uh, it does showcase uh, the teams normally ranked number one are, are, are leaders in consistency. The team that performs that number one ranking is leaders in consistency. Obviously leading, especially in the knockout stages, to a team that needs to be able to grind out games and win games. So it's all about that really. And it, it, it starts to become less about which is the stronger team and more about which team can win more regularly. As obviously knockout stages is a consistent amount of wins that really affects it. And no team has ever won a World Cup losing a game. So it's not consistency in the knockout stages. If you look at stats, and that's all World Cups, every game is essential. Every game. You cannot uh, rest on your laurels against any team. Yeah, so obviously, that. what does that say for the current World Cup going forward? Um, obviously, Wales <laughs> this week snuck, snuck the um, world number one ranking, making it the first time since 2004 that a, a Northern Hemisphere team has taken the world ranking number one. And obviously the first time, I think, ending a 512-week streak for, in, for New Zealand in winning in actually t keeping that position since 2009, which is insane. And really, commend, I commend New Zealand for showcasing world rugby and, I think, honestly, transforming world rugby, changing the game completely, really... Um, adapting and showcasing that it's not a game about brute force, it's a game about finesse, about creativity, about style, and has, I think, for the better, made many countries in the world adapt and alter to it. And I think that's also why we are seeing this. But it is congratulations to Wales on ta taking the top spot just before the World Cup. The question now comes, obviously, is can they keep it? Can they hold it for this? Because, I mean, you just snuck it in before the, the end of, before the uh, World Cup preparation. So we'll see how it goes. But obviously, what it, if, if we take the top four spots, what does that mean for a semifinal? So if we just said semifinals, uh, first place, uh, first place, fourth, we most obviously pull regulations and that won't, won't have happen. But it'll be a Wales, South Africa, New Zealand, Ireland semifinal. I there are some possibilities of the New Zealand Ireland game happening, but the Wales South Africa game highly doubt it. There's no way it could really play out. But that would be an interesting group of semi-finals, and again, that 50-50 split we've discussed in the previous few World Cups, barring the last one, which showcases the real competitiveness of both hemispheres in the World Cup. So yeah, it'll be quite exciting. I'm excited to see what Wales can do. Um, New Zealand, I think, are going to definitely, considering this last game and going forward, are definitely going to showcase what they. Um, are capable of and are the kings of consistency if you look at the world rankings. So it's all about that in the World Cup, so we'll see how it goes. I know they've had a bit of a choker moniker before 2011, to, uh, but they still are back and they are killing it. Um, Ireland and South Africa, on the other hand, Ireland had an outstanding quality year last year, a bit of a hiccup of a year this year, but I don't think we can take much from it as everything this year depends on the World Cup. So Ireland are ones to watch. They really have an amazing performance beating New Zealand last year, uh, consistently understanding and picking apart teams, uh, especially stronger teams and how they play. New Zealand last year, the rush defense, the ability to uh, slow down and play play their style of rugby. Ireland are very good at forcing their style upon you. So that'll be very interesting to see. South Africa, on the other hand, are on the rise. I had a couple of really tough years. I mean, if you look at their positioning for the pools, they were, I think, 8th or ninth when the uh, picks were made. Um, their lowest ranking, I think, since they joined um, International Rugby, which is quite disappointing. But coming now, just a year and a half later, sitting back in the top four, um, just, just honestly, but they are still in the top four, with them taking over England this week. 
So that's also is it's 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 so close in the top six or seven that we anything can happen. And Australia I have to admit, probably the kings of of entering World Cup semi-finals without being in the top four before the World Cup. So they are definitely going to be ones to watch as they can definitely elevate themselves in World Cups. England also have had a strong showing. There's no nobody can ever um, discount them in World Cups, especially considering the coaching staff and changes that happened and them actually being able to topple Wales the week before. Obviously not able to do it two, two weeks in a row, but a lot ha a, there's, a, there's very little to be taken from games going before World Cup. So there's a lot up in the air. And that's what we want to see from World Cup. And that's what excites me. So yeah, I think all it can tell me is the gate's open for any team who really wants to perform. And I think consistency is king. Thanks, guys. Let's uh, Please comment and share. And uh, like if you and subscribe. Please uh, add any comments on what you'd like me to cover next in our videos. And yeah, enjoy. Thank you.